Good evening and hello friends and welcome inside the Alpine Ice Arena for this week's edition of Wendy's Inside Bulls Hockey, the very first millennium edition, hoping that everyone had a very happy and safe new year. Well, we have a great show planned for you this week. Lots of great things going on. The Bulls continue to win. They have a winning streak going into this week's action. We'll have a feature game of the week, the game that took place on New Year's Day in Little Rock, Arkansas. We'll show you the highlights of that big 4-3 win. Also, Jamie Hicks will be by a little bit later on to talk about the Bulls' visit to Children's Hospital a little bit earlier in this week and what a great time all the players and the staff had going out to visit the kids out at Children's Hospital. And we'll also talk with the merchandising director of the Birmingham Bulls, Andrew Felix, a little bit later on in the show. We're going to step aside, we're going to take a break, but we'll be back with more on Wendy's Inside Bulls Hockey. Hockey now joined by the Bulls head coach, Dennis DeRosier. And Rosie, as we start the new year here, you take a look at the standings as we go into this week, and we're 29-4. and four. We're in first place in the division, and you, you would seem as if, as we get to the halfway point, you'd want to rest your laurels a little bit and be very happy with the way things are, but it's just, in this division, First place and seventh place are separated by seven points. You have no time to rest, even in first place at the halfway mark of the season. You're right, and it's, it seems funny. It seems like you can go on a pretty good winning streak and not gain any ground. But if you go on a losing streak, you can lose ground in a hurry. And a lot of that's to do with the fact that teams are winning in shootouts and both teams are getting points. And sometimes it's really hard to, uh, to stay ahead of people. I, I think the, the biggest uh, way to go is if you happen to get into a situation like uh, with us, Louisiana, we got three games in hand. We have to win those games, and uh, sometimes that can happen. Uh, you know, can really put some a uh, little gap in there. But if you don't, then it's uh, still a bunch. And Dennis, as, as we get to the halfway point of the season, there's been some definite bright spots in your club this year. It seems like some some combinations have worked. You got a guy like Jeff Scarf, who we acquired in the trade a season ago for Ken Tasker. He's turning into a, a scoring machine. He's got a great streak going. He has 17 goals. And you've had other bright spots. It seems like the moves you've made, getting guys like Mike Bodnerchuk, it's made your team a quicker team. You got guys like Ian A. Bear who've been sitting on the IR. When they come back, they pay immediate dividends when they return to the lineup, getting back into the goal production. And you have some goaltenders. Avi Karunakar has given you a solid backup this year. And Roach is fourth in the league and wins. Yeah, and it's a combination of everything. And a lot of times, you know, it's your your veterans are pretty much a known commodity. You know what you're getting, and uh, you have to have guys uh, come up big, like Scarf has got uh, a 12-game uh, winning streak. Scarf, come here for a minute. So he's standing here watching, and uh, I just want to shake his hand. He never gets on TV. I'd like to get him on here, just <laughs> give him a little acknowledgement about uh, the good season he's having. And uh, it's guys like that. Uh, uh, Smitty's come up big. He's got yeah. 10 goals for us. Your rookies, if you have, if you have good rookies and second-year guys that are developing, that really uh, pays a lot of dividends because we know Hicksy's going to have 90, 100, 120 points, you know, depending on the type of year he has. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the older guys, uh, what they're capable of doing. And so it's how good your rookies are. And we've been very fortunate with our rookies and second-year guys like uh, Scarfy and Stanfield's playing solid for us and Smith and Ford before he got hurt. Razor's a, a disturber out there. So we've gotten a lot of, uh, out of our uh, first and second-year guys, which really mean a lot. Last game out for the Birmingham Bulls was on New Year's Day in Little Rock, Arkansas. And then it's just going to be our featured game of the week. It was a game in which we kind of dominated for 40 minutes, but we let Arkansas get back into it. And as we take a look at the highlights to begin things here, it was Ian A. Bear who would get things started for you. And here was a guy who you had on the IR list, and he comes back, and in his second game, he's going to pay some dividends for your hockey club, and he picks up the first goal of the night. Yeah, it was a deflection goal, and... Uh a good shot that uh, I think Smikoski made the shot, and it was just one of those uh, situations where he was in the right place at the right time. And so the Bulls would then extend their lead to 2-0. It was Dennis Smikoski, you're right. He set up the play on the A-Bear goal, and then he's going to get credit for the second goal. And it seems like here was a guy who was on fire early, struggled a little bit, but he's starting to get back into his rhythm. Well, you know, it's a lot of hockey uh, early on like that, and uh, some guys hit the wall and stay there. Well, Smack, he hit the wall a little bit, but he's come back hard. He works hard in practice. And uh, he's not going to stay in a prolonged slump because of his work ethic. And we went on to period number two, and one of the guys we talked about just a moment ago, Mike Bonner, Chuck, he's been a veteran that you added to your team, and he can just flat out fly. Yeah, Bondo's a good skater. Uh, as I said, he played uh, for me in, I think, 1992 in Cincinnati in the IHL, so I knew I was getting good speed out of him. And uh, incidentally, Bondo had enough chances in that game. He could have put it away single-handedly. He hit the post with an open net and a couple other chances. So they were... Arkansas was quite lucky that we let him stay in it as long as we did. And then, Dennis, here you see Ian A. Bear puts a nifty move on Jeff Saleko to give you guys a 4-1 lead. You had to feel very confident. You were out shooting them 28-15 to going into the third. But then all of a sudden in the third period, we take some penalties. We play some undisciplined hockey. Here you're going to see Weingartner getting them with win one. 
Yeah, you know, we, we uh, kind of let up there. I think that uh, mentally we just kind of relaxed, 4-1, pretty much in control. And the referee wasn't doing us any favors either. He called a couple of uh, penalties that I didn't think were uh, very fra uh, fragrant uh, offenses, but he called them anyway. And uh, as a result, they get a couple goals, keep it close, and, you know, we did finish them off. I don't think there was any real immediate uh, danger, but uh, they did make some shots, and we had an opportunity to score in the open net, and we didn't. So... Uh, we end up getting the two points. Yeah, and there you can see at the very end of the clips there, Avi Karunikar made some pretty big saves at the very end of that contest when they had the two-man advantage because they were on a power play. They pulled their goaltender, right. and uh, he stood up tall, and he picked up his sixth win, and he's giving you a, a definite source to give Scott Roach some time off and, and, and not give a game away. Well, it's been nice. The last couple of years, we haven't had a backup goaltender that we could put in and confidently feel that we are going to win that hockey game. And uh, this year we have that with Karuna Carr. He's done a good job. Uh, I'm, I don't know if Abby's capable of being a full-time goaltender. You know, some guys mm -hmm. just got a really good mindset for being a backup, and that's what we brought him in here for. I don't foresee that changing. I foresee him uh, possibly getting more ice time now that we got, you know, some games coming up uh, closer together. But uh, Roach is uh, our main guy. Roach is 22 years old, and uh, I personally think he's got a, a good future ahead of him, depending on know how hard he works and how hard he wants it and uh, Abby's just a little bit older got a good mindset to be a backup guy and he's just a good steadying uh, force back there for our goaltending tandem and uh, it uh, I think it's a good combination right now so it's a great way to start off your new year first game of the new millennium picking up the two points yeah. and having some fun with the guys the night before as well if you don't win the first one you can't win them all <laughs> That's right. So that was our feature game of the week. The Bulls beating the Arkansas Riverblades on the road by a score of 4-3. to three. We need to step aside. We'll be back with more on Wendy's Inside Bulls Hockey. Welcome back to Wendy's Inside Bulls Hockey, now joined by the merchandising director of the Birmingham Bulls, Andrew Felix. And Andrew, a lot of times people want to know how they can get their hands uh, on some Birmingham Bulls merchandise, some of the newer things that are coming out. So we thought we'd have you on the show and show out some of the newer pieces that the, the Bulls will be offering. And we can go over that. But first, I want to talk about all your friends that you brought down here. It looks like a, a miniature woolly doll. It seems like a, a great thing for the little kids. Uh, yeah, Mike, we received these actually uh, the day before on December 23rd um, to hit the, the Christmas market, in which it did. It, it did very well with the kids during Christmas as we target as a stocking stuffer. But now anybody can pick them up at any Bulls games or come by the office. You know, ask for me, ask for anybody, anybody in the office is able to help you. As we say, these are, these are like our little gremlins. They uh, are everywhere with us. Um, I travel around with them in my car. They're all over the office and everybody's desk. Uh, they're great little toys um, for little kids, adults to put on your desk. They actually, uh, if you look at this, they can actually hang on the ends of your desk. Um, the legs are very movable, so you can actually put them anywhere you'd like them to go. And it's a great treat for the little kids. Now let's talk about some of the items of uh, clothing. We know the adults when they come to the games, and I tell you what, when I go on a road game and I see a sea of black and red in the stands, it always fires me up. And some of the newer stuff we got out, I can see here, yeah, you're even sporting one of the sharp switch shirts. Uh, these are relatively new, and they come in a couple different colors, especially now that the uh, winter time's around, some uh, sweatshirts for the Birmingham Bulls. All right, yeah, these are brand new. They just came out last week. Basically what it is is a, just a plain sweatshirt, because I know everybody likes plain things, not with a whole bunch of things everywhere on it. This one right across the front of it says Birmingham Bulls Hockey in like lowercase writing. It comes in gray with black and red lettering. It also comes in black with uh, gray and red lettering. Um, another uh, an item we uh, carry is, uh, of course, for the summertime coming up would be the uh, brand new golf shirts. Uh, we have these in uh, red and gray collars with the logo on the left chest. Um, we'll also be getting uh, some gray ones in, some black ones, and some red ones. Now, Andrew, you have some great pieces of merchandise. How can people pick up merchandise for the Birmingham Bulls? Where can they go, and when is it available? That's everybody's question. Uh, you're able to pick them up at every single game. Uh, there's a stand in 19th Street entrance. You're able to call the office at 458-8655, which is my direct number. Um, you can call the main number. Uh, you stop by the office during regular business hours. Um, Pretty much just come in, you know, the, the store, it's not really a store, it's just an office. You just come in, you ask, you see what you need, we'll bring you back, that we'll show you whatever you need. And before we wrap up, I know another uh, question I have for you is we've got some great bull stuff, but everybody knows that we're involved with the Steel Dogs as well, the football team that will kick off here.
pretty soon in the April 2000 inaugural season. Steel Dogs merchandise, when is that going to come in and have we started to get that stuff going? Uh, we had, when we first announced the team, we had some shirts and hats and everybody always saw them out and at different events we had and uh, they're always like, how can I get a shirt, how can I get a hat? Well, the shirts and hats right now aren't in, uh, but hopefully by the beginning of February, uh, since our season is rapidly approaching, we'll be getting you know, golf shirts in, sweatshirts and hats, t-shirts, many helmets, many footballs, anything you can ever see at a football game we'll have for the Steel Dogs. Uh, the uh, biggest item we'll have is, uh, you know, it's going to sound weird, but it's going to be an orange golf shirt. It's going to be an orange golf shirt with a black collar on it. Um, we hope everybody enjoys it, but it is in Steel Dogs color, so we are trying to make, you know, every little item part of it. Well, we definitely look forward to the Steel Dogs merchandise fans. Don't forget to stop by that 19th Street stand to pick up some of this new hot Birmingham Bulls merchandise. Andrew, I want to thank you for taking the time yeah, to join thank us. You, Mike. We'll see you at the games. That's Andrew Felix, merchandise and director of the Birmingham Bulls. We need to step aside. We'll be back with more on Wendy's Inside Bulls Hockey.